Hello, everyone. Today, I'm excited to present our OLMO project, a truly open language model. OLMO stands for Open Language Model. Our goal in this project is to build large language models scientifically and collaboratively. We want every step in the process be open, documented, and reproducible, such that researchers and developers can take our models and build upon that. In particular, our goal is to empower this large community to help us build better uh, and stronger language models. I probably don't need too much convincing in this room, but I would like to argue that we want open language models, language models that are truly open. So we have different degrees of openness these days defined within the language modeling community. Some group only release and open their APIs, which is pretty limiting for the broader audience of researchers and developers. Other groups open up the model weights, okay, which is really good, which is very helpful. But here we want to argue that we actually need language models, that every step of the process is truly open, starting from the data, training and inference code, and so on. Or as NSF size directors argues, researchers in AI without having access to the fully open language model is like researchers, uh, astronomers, researching about solar system just by looking at their pictures in newspapers. So what is the OLMO project? We have organized our work in building these language models in four important steps. First step is data. This is the hidden uh, secret of a lot of language modeling research, and it is the least transparent. But at the same time, some would argue this is the most important one. Second step is training, where you actually take the data and then uh, build those model weights that everybody is talking about. This is the most resource intensive, and it's pretty much very hard for a lot of companies and institutes to be able to do this step. And unfortunately, not a lot of details from even open source models are available for their training stages. The next step is adaptation. So the base model that we are getting at the end of training, it's not ready to be able to be, to, to, to be used for, to follow human instructions, okay? Or it is not safe. Through this step, we take this base model and then adapt it and align it with human intent. And then the final step is evaluation, which is really not the final step. We would do evaluation throughout this whole process, right? We would do evaluation uh, to make modeling decisions and then finally evaluate our model capabilities. So here are the artifacts that we have released across each of these four categories, including our training data and a toolkit, how to curate the data and how to analyze and study it, training, all the model weights, uh, the training code, even intermediate checkpoints, Adaptation, we have adapted the language model to kind of different use cases. We have this open instruct in the GitHub uh, and also Olmo instruct. And then finally, our evaluation pipeline through Catwalk framework and also our perplexity benchmark, which I'm gonna talk about in a second. Okay, our first stop, data. We have released our training data to build Olmo, which is called Dolma. It is high quality data. It includes uh, three trillion token across five billion documents. It is largely web data, but it also includes other types of uh, domains, including referential data such as Wikipedia, code uh, like from a star coder and a stack exchange, conversation like data like Reddit, scientific articles and so on. We released the second version of this data set yesterday, and it is much of higher quality. So data in its raw form is not useful for training these type of models. What we need, we need to do a few processing uh, to, to make it ready for training. 
In particular, in this project, we are focused on English, so our first step is language filtering. Second, we do some deduplication uh, for URLs. Then we apply a few quality filtering steps uh, and like to remove the, the sequences that are not interesting and so on. And then we do content filtering where we, our goal is to remove toxic content and personal information such as emails, addresses, and so on. And then finally, at the end of this stage, we do a few rounds of deduplication where we do exact deduplication at paragraph and document level and also fuzzy deduplication. Okay, so the data that we curate at this stage is of high quality, but still it's really useful and important if we go over the data and see how it looks like and qualitatively analyze it. We have developed this tool called What's in My Big Data where through this, uh, using this tool, we have indexed the data and also provided counting and search uh, capabilities. And with that, now we are able to do some analysis. For example, uh, the most common engrams in some of the popular training data sets are a long sequence of question marks. Or chess.com is one of the most popular websites in the C4 and even in a lot of other pre-training data sets, maybe alluding to the fact of why some of these data sets are good in playing chess. Okay, so here is a table of some other data sets that are being used to train proprietary models. I don't want you to read this whole table. I just want to highlight that there are a lot of question marks here. We don't know how these data are being curated. And this is the list of open data sets that are available for training. And compared to these, we really like to argue that DOLMA is of highest quality uh, and larger. It includes more tokens. And why do I talk about more tokens? Because if we include more tokens, it improves the quality of our language model. Okay, so to summarize, through this process, we've released our dataset Dolma, which is a large dataset for training language models, a toolkit to curate this dataset, and then a toolkit to analyze and qualitatively study what is going on in these datasets. Uh, the first few weeks after the release of this data, it has stayed to be the most popular dataset on Hugging Face. Okay, next step is training. Through this step, we took our data, used a transformer architecture with some details that we have shared, and then built the Olmo model. In particular, we have so far released Olmo at 1 billion parameter and 7 billion parameter scale. And 70 billion parameter model is training. It is a slow, as I mentioned, it requires a lot of GPU compute. Olmo is better on par with comparable size models that are somewhat open or proprietary. Interestingly, it has been trained on both NVIDIA and AMD hardware. Arguably, we were the first who made uh, language modeling training work on AMD hardware. Something that is also unique to our project is that we have released 500 intermediate checkpoints throughout the process. Uh, we, we argue that this is really helpful for AI developers and researchers to study what is going on uh, during training as well. So training, unfortunately, is very expensive and very challenging. And usually teams who are building these language models would observe these type of challenges. And because not a lot of these details are being shared, everyone who is building these things, they had to start doing similar experiments to figure out like what are those really modeling decisions. So this table that you are seeing on the right shows some of the details that we have used to train uh, our Olmo model. Because, and, and it was really impossible to do all ablations. Uh, we, we, we have shared all our findings, so hopefully the next group don't need to do all these uh, uh, extra experiments. There, there were also a lot of uh, hidden bugs with the AMD software particularly, or even in PyTorch, where during these experiments we communicated this uh, with, with the engineers and now they are fixing those issues. Okay. 
So here are our results. Uh, so we have, we have compared Olmo with other open language models at the same size, uh, where the first version was almost on par. Uh, and the second version, which we released yesterday, is even better than Llama 2 and other models. Okay. So this figure also shows our train, how to, our training progresses over a set of downstream tasks. And this shows the accuracy versus the number of tokens or training stages. And as you see, interestingly, uh, we, we also found that when you increase the number of tokens in training, the performances and accuracies increase. Okay, to summarize, we have released our Olmo model at 7B and 1 billion parameter on both NVIDIA and AMD hardware. We have all details of training and inference code and also the training logs and intermediate checkpoints. Uh, similar to the Dolma data set, the first few weeks after the release, Dolma was the, one of the most popular uh, data, uh, models on Hugging Face. Okay. Next step is our adaptation work stream. So as I mentioned, the base model that comes at the end of the training stage, it's not safe, right? Or it's not useful or, or, or it's not fully able to follow human instructions. Throughout this step, we are trying to make these things possible. And we have everything open on open instruct uh, get, on GitHub. So how does it work? Basically, we are defining the new capabilities that we want to add to our base models. Let's say follow instructions or know how, how to study scientific articles or refuse when you don't see some, uh, uh, some, some safe questions. Then we apply instruction tuning and th then we start collecting data to address these type of questions, right? So usually we call it instruction data or preference data. Since human preference data or human instruction collection is expensive, we do a, 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 list, a, a combination of manually annotated and also synthetically generated data collection. And then finally, we apply uh, instruction tuning and reinforcement learning with human feedback algorithms to improve these models. So we have worked on instruction tuning since uh, 2020, where back then our goal was to build a system that is able to do a really large collection of NLP type tasks. What do I mean by NLP type tasks? The, the tasks that uh, like we, we, we were studying for a long time in the AI community, like answering questions or summarizing the text or uh, translating some, some, some content from one language to the other language. But usually in all these types of applications, we were generating a short snippets of text. Then we thought, okay, this is still not useful for like real use cases. So through this process, we realized, okay, it's very challenging to, to use humans to annotate these type of long sequences of text for us. But one, one idea that came to our mind was we could use language models, because now they are getting better and better, to synthetically generate this type of input-output for us. And we introduced this self-instruct framework, which was received really well within the community. And shortly after that, a new systems were introduced using kind of this, this methodology, uh, models like Alpaca, Waikuna, Bayes, and so on. And then we started seeing a lot of comments that, okay, now we are getting uh, to, th this, this was around 20, early 2023, 20, that now we are getting a lot of uh, buzz that, okay, now these open models are as good as proprietary models. Uh, some groups were like, no, we are not that good. So we thought this is right on our alley. So we want to actually study this. Let's see what happens. So we started looking at all these data that were collected by uh, our friends in the open source community, um, and also these different models that existed. So we started seeing what is the best recipe to integrate all of these and build the best adapted model. Through this, we uh, in introduced Tulu, which was built on Meta's Llama model back then. Um, and at, the, at that time, we noticed that, okay, Tulu is the largest open model that is adapted to, to be able to do chat type applications. 
uh, and we observed the really state-of-the-art results across some external benchmarks, like it was on the uh, top four on the Alpaca leaderboard, even better than uh, GPT-3, a little bit behind GPT-4, uh, and similarly on the MT bench benchmark. So to summarize, we have all details of our instruction tuning data, preference data uh, on our open instruct GitHub. We have created Tulutu based on Llama and also Olmo instruct. Um, and like we would love if you can also contribute to improving the data there. Okay, last stop is evaluation, which is actually really important uh, on evaluating how the models are performing. We have done evaluation at two important settings. One, online evaluation, which basically evaluates how the model progresses over time. And we use that to make modeling decisions, to see how to select data, and so on. And then the downstream evaluation, where we, at the, at the last checkpoint, we want to see how good the model is performing on, the, on a group of tasks. And also, these are like some end task applications that also a lot of other people use in the community. But at the same time, we want to see how good, how can we come evaluate intrinsic capabilities of language modeling, like how good these language models can imitate text. And for that purpose, we introduced the Paloma, which is a benchmark to evaluate perplexity, which is a common metric to do language modeling evaluation. Uh, we have collected more than 500 domains of text to see how our language models are able to imitate th that, those types of tasks. Okay, so for evaluation, in summary, we have the catwalk framework and Paloma benchmark and also downstream benchmark. All of them are also available on GitHub and Hugging Face. Okay, to summarize, we have uh, created the Olmo language model. Every step in our process is open across all these four categories. Uh, these are links uh, to our uh, code, the data, evaluation, adaptation, and model weights. Uh, so thanks a lot for listening to my talk. We would love to use all your help, all the open source community help to, to help us build better and bigger Olmo models. Thank you.